Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at um, trapping small mammals. And what we use to do this is a long rip trap, which is composed of two parts, the nest box and this, which is the tunnel. And the two things snap together. The mouse runs in here, goes over a little treadle system, which puts the door down, and then it's caught in the nest box for us afterwards. We're going to put in some bedding to keep the animal warm and hopefully dry. And we also put in some um, bait as well to encourage them in and to keep them going. So what we've got here are peanuts, a bit of hazelnut and some par jokes, just things that mice and bulls like to eat. And um, we then snap the two parts together. We've got the nest box and the, um, the tunnel. There's a little treadle towards the end of the tunnel. When the animal goes in, the door will close behind it and hopefully he'll be caught and quite safe for the night. The back of the trap as well, there's a shrew hole so little shrews don't um, get stuck because uh, they wouldn't survive in the traps during the night. And another thing to point out is the tunnel um, and nest box clip together at an angle so that when you have the tunnel flat the nest box sits up a bit so any uh, liquid that forms in the nest box will drain out so the animal won't get wet. Okay and then we place the traps down either at the base of a tree or along a fallen log. The little um, mice and bank voles don't like running across open areas so they like to be up against something. So I'm just placing them down here so and then we also cover them partly to stop them being very shiny and strange looking to the animals but also to disguise them from any passers-by and finally also to uh, provide an extra bit of insulation for the animals that are caught during the night. because um, the, the idea is that if an animal comes across a trap it should be able to go into them so if a trap is closed then it can't go in so you leave them in pairs so that even when one's caught there's also an option for a second but, but if you then find that you're still I think it's if over more than half your traps are full then you should put them out in threes Take our clothes trap and see if we've got anything in it. So we're going to empty the contents into the bag. Now the, the secret to this is making sure that we have an absolutely tight seal at the top there. So if there is a little mouse or vole that falls into the bag, it's not going to run straight up and get away. So we crack open the trap, shake out the funnel. And we now have the nest box is empty there and we have our little mouse in the bag with the 
tunnel and the hay. So what I'm going to do is just move them so that he's at this top corner here. Corner there will do. Hold them in place and get the tunnel and the hay out of the bag. So now we've just got our little mouse in the bag. And there's a lot of things that we need to record here. The very first thing we do is record the trap number, which is 32. We need to know what species we're looking at, and that's a wood mouse. Okay, you can tell it's a wood mouse from the colour. It's a chestnut brown colour on the back and a pale under, uh, underside. He's got big eyes, fairly big ears, and a long tail. Um, so that's your, your standard wood mouse, Apodinus sylvaticus. Now, the next thing we're going to do is weigh him. To do this, we use a Pisola balance. Which we attach to the top of the bag. Hold up and you just simply read it off. So the weight of the wood mouse plus the bag is 16 grams, which is quite small. I don't think he's very old. So we'll make sure we write that down. In grams and wood mouse. So now I'm going to take him out so that we can have a look to see whether he's a male or a female. So I've got him into the corner of the bag. They're very easy to manipulate wood mice because they always go up and away from you. So if you want to get him to move to the other side of the bag, you simply position it up and he runs straight away from you. And so by getting him into the corner of the bag, you can get easily pick them up. And what I do there is I find the just behind his ears at the neck and I just pinch lightly but firmly to get a good hold of him and then I can lift him out and he's not going to bite me and he's quite content as well. Now that's a male, it's only a young male but it's a male which you can tell from the distance from the genitals which are just there to the anus. And being a young animal He's not a, uh, at a breeding age yet either. Put him back in the bag so he's more comfortable. And write that down. So we're going to get a measure of his actual body size now, um, so that we can compare the two. And to do that, we're going to measure his hind foot length, just as a, a simple body measurement. So again, I'll get him into the corner, and hopefully he'll put his foot. Thank you very much up against the, the bag of vernier calipers in order to measure his hind foot length. Now just take it from the base of the heel forward to the tip of the, the longest digit. And hopefully just need to persuade him to push his toes out a little bit. And we measure that. Again. Perfect. At 19.7 millimeters. In order to uh, do a mark recapture um, study, I need to make a little mark on the animal so I know I've caught him before. So what I'm going to do is give him a little haircut on his haunches that will show up if I catch this same animal again so I know I'm not counting him twice in the population. And to do that, I just need to expose his haunch slightly. And what I'm going to do is cut away the, the top fur and expose some of the under fur, which will do him no damage at all, but will um, leave a nice dark little patch that I can look out for when I come back tomorrow. The secret to this is just being patient and gentle. And there we have a nice dark patch on his backside, which I'll be able to see if I catch him tomorrow. And the final thing we can do is let him go unharmed back. It's a little eyes. The final thing we have to do is weigh the bag. 
and this bag weighs just 1.5 grams. So that gives us a net weight of our uh, apodemus of 14.5 grams. It's a female. So the genital opening is much closer to the anus that time. She's also perforate, which means that she's bred recently as well. You can see a little black line running from the genital opening to the anus. Yes, it is. Yeah, 19. Somewhere between 19 and 19.5, but we can only be as accurate as the scale, so it's 19 grams. The testes, when they're not breeding, um, are abdominal, but whenever they are breeding, they, they move down into a scrotal position. And is now they're not exactly impressive, but they're started is um, more in a breeding condition than the ones we saw earlier. So this is a bank bulb. The, it's got a very different shape to the um, wood mouse. It's got a very broad head and not as much constriction at, uh, at the neck. The eyes are very small in comparison, as are the ears, and its tail is about half the length. But also its colour, it's got a different um, overall colour, but there isn't the distinction between the, the dorsal fur and the under fur, as you would see with the wood mouse. So I'm going to just take this wee fella out, feisty little fella out, so we can have a, a good look. And the difference in the um, fur from the dorsal to the underfur isn't as distinct. We also can see that this is very definitely a female, yeah, with the genitals very close to the anus. But also she's a little, a little bare patches where um, her litter have been um, feeding. And that sort of wears away the fur around the nipples.